Our next presenter is Randy Jia, who is going to talk about simple connectedness of some flip complexes. Simple. I don't know about you, but it took me one entire week of reading math papers to understand what this title meant. <clears throat> so I'll explain this title to you, but to do that, you have to file this title away in the back of your head. Because right now, I'm going to take you guys all on a journey. But not any kind of journey. It's going to be an RSI odyssey. <laughs> so we begin with triangulations. A triangulation is a set of points, P, that is a complete subdivision of P into basic triangles. A basic triangle is a triangle that contains only three vertices. And there are no vertices on its boundary or inside the triangle. So for example, here's a triangulation of these eight points. Notice that we cannot draw any more edges between vertices because they would intersect with an edge and therefore it wouldn't be a triangulation anymore. So notice that triangulations can be related to each other. For example, these two triangulations are very similar. We have this red edge here and we have this red edge here and everything else is the same. This is what we call a flip. Essentially, a flip is taking any convex quadrilateral, so in this case it's this one, and instead of taking one diagonal, we just take the other one. That's a flip. And now, this is another flip in the triangulation we had earlier. So I want to make a flip graph, but before we do that, we have to understand what graphs are. So graphs are merely vertices and edges in space. Vertices are points, so these dots here, and edges are lines connecting these points. Now a graph is connected if there's a path between any two points. So for example, this graph is not connected because this point right here is all lonely. However, if we just draw this edge right here, we get a connected graph, and that's good. So the flip graph of a point set P is a graph for which each vertex represents some distinct triangulation of that point set. And two vertices are adjacent if the two corresponding triangulations differ by exactly one flip. So what does this mean? We'll start by making one out of four points. So we start with four points. We find all the possible triangulations, and it's these two. We draw a vertex for each triangulation, so two vertices. Then we connect with an edge because they differ by a flip because in this case, this edge flips over to this edge. And ta-da, we have the flip graph. So four points gives us this very simple looking flip graph. So flip graphs probably aren't that complicated, right? No, this is what you get with six points. It's really complicated and therefore, when we're dealing with flip graphs, we don't really want to draw them all out because they get really messy. Now, we know that flip graphs are connected by a uh, paper by Charles Lawson. However, what happens if we fix certain edges that we force to be part of a triangulation? So for example, consider this diagram. Let the solid edges be edges that we fix. This means that we have to use these edges in any triangulation. As a result, for example, we can use the dotted lines to show a triangulation, and that's one such triangulation using these fixed edges. We proved that the flip graph is still connected. This is a good result, and it will be very beneficial in proving our main theorem. Now, what's a flip complex? Well, flip complex is merely taking a flip graph and adding a bunch of surfaces to it. So what kind of surfaces do we want to add? Well, we add surfaces of simple four and five cycles. Four and five cycles are merely paths of length four and five that start at a vertex and end at that same vertex. So we will affix four cycles that arise from two disjoint quadrilateral flips. What does this mean? Consider this diagram. We have flipping, we, can, we have a blue edge and a red edge to flip. So to get from this top left to the bottom right, we can flip red and blue, or we can flip blue and then red. We claim that this is the same thing and it's just redundant. So we add a quadrilateral plate. And essentially this plate makes it so that any sort of path from here to here, it doesn't matter which way we take it, it's the same thing. We also do this for five cycles that arise from pentagon arrangement of points. 
So for example, we have a simple five cycle of pentagons, and we played it in a similar way. So now we move on to simple connectedness. What does it mean for a surface to be simply connected? This is what it means. You could read it if you want. In other words, every loop contracts to a point. What does it mean for a loop to contract to a point? Well, we consider this figure here. We'd start with this manta ray looking loop, and we slowly draw it in and in and in and in, and we get a point. That's what it means for a loop to contract. If you still don't understand, I'll give you two examples. The sphere is simply connected because any loop on the surface of the sphere can always be shrunk down to a point. However, if we take a donut and we take a loop on the outer ring, we cannot, we cannot ever shrink that loop down to a point because that middle hole in the donut will, is that you can't contract the loop through that hole. So that's simple connectedness. And now we move on to our main theorem. Our theorem is that for any point set P, the plated flip graph is simply connected. So first we consider the convex case. The convex point set case merely is a bunch of points that if you were to connect the outer boundary, we would get a convex polygon. We look at triangulations of convex point sets. Here's one such triangulation. Notice that all the diagonals, are, uh, all the edges used are either diagonals or on the boundary. This is very helpful because there are no points lying inside here. So this case wasn't that bad to prove, and we managed to do it. So we move on to the lattice case. The lattice case was a little more difficult because there are collinear points. Collinear points, for example, are these four points. They all lie on the same line. When we triangulate a lattice case, we see that there are some triangles that don't use vertices that are on the boundary. This complicates the situation, but we still manage to prove this. So we move on to any point set. This is the hardest case, obviously. And when we take all possible triangulations, here's one, for example, we find that it works. So now applications. There are many new topological aspects of graphs that we have explored with a specific focus on the properties of flip graphs. And we also looked at triangulations, which are very, very useful in the real world, such as studying, creation, creating and analyzing contour maps. So for future work, we can consider higher dimensional complexes, e.g. Uh, affixing polyhedra instead of plates. We affixed plates to our flip graph and got a flip complex, but we could also attach maybe a square to that, I mean a cube to that area, or a four-dimensional hypercube, or anything. Uh, we could also look at other topological and graph theoretical aspects of flip graphs. For example, diameter, flip distance, and how the graph actually looks because it looks so messy. And acknowledgments, I'd like to thank my mentor, uh, Mr. John Lejeur. Uh, my tutor, Dr. Rickert, uh, Tanya and Professor David Jerison for the, being the best, uh, Jody for editing, helping me out on my paper and presentation, and uh, Akshay, Wenyu, Jan, Kevin, Jacob, Elizabeth, Brian, Ben, Dr. Ann Lai, PhD, <laughs> Kate, Gabriel, Adam, Jenny, Janet, Kartik, Amrith, David, and Leon, and everyone else. I'd also like to thank Mr. Paul Sagan and Dr. Tom Layden of Akmai Technologies for sponsoring me and giving me this opportunity. I'd like to thank the CE and RSI and MIT for making this experience possible. Thank you. Uh, all right. Do we have any questions? Right here. So I don't imagine any cartographer came into a mathematician's office and asked, how can I analyze flip graphs? Some mathematician thought of this. What, why? What, what are they related to? Where does, how did this arise? Oh, how did this arise? The question is about um, how cartographers might use this group, I'm assuming, in contour maps? Or how, how, how did this come up with, where, where was the origin of this field? So you want to know how exactly, what are the applications of my project, basically? Kind of. That he's not assuming there are any applications. That's fine. I'm just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's connected to something. It has a, there's a history. There's, there are other concepts that ties into that cause someone to think yeah. of 
People have always been interested in triangulations just because it just seems so normal to do. <laughs> and so when they look at, uh, they study how triangulations are related to each other. And I guess that's how flip graphs arise. And were you asking about contour maps? Contour maps are made up of triangulations, but I'm actually not exactly sure how they are related to flip graphs at all. Right here. Are there any practical applications? <laughs> <laughs> this question is about applications and? Uh, no, there are not any practical applications. The, this project is? For speeding up graph theory uh, algorithms? Um, perhaps. <laughs> you never know with mathematics. I mean, maybe one day this can cure cancer or something. <laughs> Why four and five cycles? The thing is, in your construction of the complex, you had these four cycles that come from two disjoint flips, and you had the five cycles from the pentagon, and you glued plates into those. Uh, why stop there? Was there something special about these two that, where there aren't, where it wouldn't be natural to continue this? Um, the question is, you are affixing plates to four cycles and five cycles, but why not continue? Is there any natural reason for stopping here? Um, yes, when we consider six points, we get this. And uh, actually, each one of these triangulations is actually supposed to be a vertex, but I just showed it what the triangulation looks like. And when we consider it with six points, we notice it actually consists of five cycles and four cycles. So essentially, all the six cycles, six cycles are actually just four and five cycles built up around it. Any more questions from the judges? From the audience? All the way over here. What's the number of triangulations on that, on that point of the space? Um, the question is, what's the number of triangulations of endpoints in the plane? Um, it depends on how those points are arranged. If all the points are arranged in one line, they're just like one, because you just draw a line. And if they're all arranged in, if they're arranged in a convex arrangement, it's the n minus first Catalan number, something like that. <laughs> right, any more questions? Thank you very much. <laughs>